wait no longer. Greatness has arrived. Welcome to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. I am your host, Joseph, a.k.a. Mr. Batman, and it is here where me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest, the greatest in all things PlayStation. You can listen to the show wherever you get your RSS feed services or on YouTube at Bad Big Games. And if you like what you hear, you could please, please, please go on over to iTunes, rate us five stars. Really does help us out. And if you really like us, you could have went to patreon.com slash bad bit but instead throw those donations over to save the children.org because they really need your help and so with all that said and with all that out of the way the greatest co-host whoever is whoever will be mr kyle stevenson how are you sir i'm doing fantastic uh i now am currently living in a world where i have been playing final fantasy 7 remake so everything is good with me Okay. That Let's, never gets old, I swear. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Before we get to the guest. I start my day with watching the reveal trailer at E3. Oh, now. my God. That's how I start my days. <laughs> I get chills just thinking about it. Yep. Listen, listen, Adam, back to your corner, because before I introduce our amazing guest, we got we to gotta address the elephant in the room. Kyle, you have a, you have a mustache right now, man. What? Yeah. And? <laughs> Again, I said this when we were off air, you look like a crooked... Late seventies cop. I do, I, I definitely do. <laughs> what I look like a cop that just takes money from anybody to uh, like brush things under the table. It's fine. <laughs> you meet him. You meet him, and he's like, I don't know, like like in a back alley of a Dunkin' yeah. because I'm thinking this is in Boston for some reason. And you're just like, yeah, put it in the glazed donut bag and get out of here. That type of thing. I, I run an underground fight ring. That's, okay. That, Can I join? I <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, but real talk, what prompted you for this mustache? Because, again, I know we got a lot of PlayStation stuff, but the world's crumbling, yeah. and I need to know. <laughs> the world deserves to know what uh, I, went through your mind. <laughs> I've been getting tired of my beard, honestly, and okay. it just I'm not going anywhere for the foreseeable future. And a mustache at home is acceptable because it's just me seeing myself in the mirror and like well now everyone who watches this will see it but like yeah. it's fine it's, we have, my beard's should, already growing back in should so we have I, a poll i feel like we should have a poll <laughs> don't do a poll <laughs> should kyle keep the stash <laughs> yes well i it's have gorgeous. i have to now because mm-hmm. if i don't it i i'll look like buzz from home alone and i don't want that <laughs> <laughs> okay okay you get to keep it you get to keep it yeah but when you grow the beard back, you have to cut it into a, a handlebar mustache. Uh, I'll see what I can do. All right. Excellent. And with us this week, our very, very, very special guest. You've seen his words over at IGN, Mr. Adam Bankhurst. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. It's been a okay. while, Joe. I'm, I missed talking to you. It's nice. We have we podcasted. Literally, it's been a like year and change. Yeah, I saw you again. If I'm not mistaken, maybe I just saw your doppelganger, and I'm like, "Hey, Adam!" And they're like, huh. "But I saw you again at uh, at PAX East, which seems like a year ago again." Yeah, we like. But, yeah. I ran into you like right when I got to PAX. I saw you yeah. sitting on a chair, and I was like, "Oh my god, bad day!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and yeah, we went to your to your amazing uh, panel. I think that was the yeah. first. Yeah, panel you got I to ask a question too. It was nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, Adam, uh, where are you from? And also, I know you also do a little podcast as well. So, tell us a bit about yourself. Elevator pitch for us. So yeah. Yeah, so my name's Adam Bankhurst. I live in Columbus, Ohio, and I'm a writer for IGN.com. Do you know news, features, previews, all that kind of stuff. Been there for coming up on two years. In June, it'll be nice. which is exciting. So, yeah, it's been it's been you know the dream come true. It's what I've always kind of strived for. So that's been awesome. Um, but yeah, you mentioned also the podcast. I, mm-hmm. It's called the Gamers Advocate, which we've been doing. We just hit episode 120, and that's kind of the thing that was the catalyst for me jumping into the industry, you know, me and my friends, you know, I'm sure just like you and Kyle were like, let's, let's do this thing. Let's have some fun. So Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's something that we record every week. And, uh, yeah, and we're actually excited to have Joe on this week. Yeah. <laughs> we that. And yeah, Kyle, mm-hmm. I'd love to have you on at some point too. Yeah, anytime. But yeah, just, you know, just nothing too specific, just a bunch of friends talking about whatever games, yeah. entertainment stuff. But That's awesome. yeah, yeah, it's been, and uh, it's been good. You're such a positive voice because from like when we talk about IGN, we see, we see this huge like monstrosity, the biggest <laughs> thing in video games right we never it's kind of like faceless and we can never put a face to it and when i see a lot of people like like trash it which is i guess because you know it is the biggest thing so it's a good, people it's a have to target so. <laughs> yeah so i i mean it's literally a target on on the, on the <laughs> icon so like w- when i hear people throw shade at it 
I'm just like, well, like people like Jana Garcia, people like Adam Banker. It's like, yeah, I know there's these some people. incredible people working there. It's yeah, it's a, it's a really good crew. And then you got Brian Altano. So I get the hate. But like, <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about his animal crossing creations? I don't know if you guys have been seeing that. But I he is like not. a master. He's, he likes, he's, he's recreated like a recording studio and a, like a tiki room and it's like collection of shoes and all this stuff. I'm like, this I, is have tr- I have tried to do that. I am miserable at it. But yeah, you know what? This is a way. PlayStation <laughs> podcast. So we have to get back on track yeah, here. Come on. Also, uh, y- you work remotely. So before this, the, the whole chaos ensued, um, how was life then and now? In terms of how not just you operate, but but IGN as a whole operates from what so, yeah. you can see. So obviously everyone's working from home now. So you see a lot of if you watch all the all of our podcasts and stuff, everyone's recording from their houses and doing stuff like that. So that's that's definitely been a big change. But yeah, for me personally, you know, I've I've been I live in Columbus, so not San Francisco. So I it's it's not too much of a difference. The biggest things is, you know, like I won't get to go to E3 or hopefully, I mean, PAX West isn't looking too promising and, you know, certain events some preview events, certain stuff that probably won't happen. So that's kind of the big thing for me, which is something I always look forward to, which is a shame, but you know, in, in today's day and age, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, through Slack and Trello and usual things, you can really do pretty much everything you need to from the comfort of your own desk, which is nice. So it's, it hasn't been too much of a change, I guess, for me personally. That's awesome. But, that's all. And I'm, I'm again, cause I'm, I'm glad that, your life hasn't been uprooted as much because I've seen so many other people who who are and they're not dealing with the change that great. And you got a yeah. kid at home and a wife as well to take care of. And bam, you're doing it all. You know, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was talking to you guys before that. It's like we have a 10 month old, my little guy, Liam, Oof. who's the best thing in the entire universe. That's and it's we're used to staying at home anyway. So it's like the quarantine isn't, isn't all that much different because we're just at home all the time anyway. So it's, he's always keeping us busy and putting a smile on our face. It's just, That's awesome. I love that dude. Now, do you, does your wife to pay you to say that? Because it is a kid. After all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> he literally, I, I know people always say, enjoy your life. It's the greatest thing ever. And it's 10 times that it's literally the best oh, thing ever. Well, you know what? Before we talk, let's get out of the way of the gift of life itself and <laughs> the beauty that is kids and innocence and unconditional love. Because today we have a ton of PlayStation talk to talk about. So usually we start the show with what you've been playing. But because Final Fantasy VII Remake has come out and it's a huge game and we got some huge impressions on it, we're actually going to bring it to the back burner. and We're going to save that for the end of of the show. So let's actually start the show with squaring up the news. So Kyle, let's square up the news. First uh, story comes from Jordan Ramey from GameSpot. PS5 and Xbox Series X versions of Cyberpunk 2077 might happen, but not at launch. Cyberpunk 2077 will indeed be getting separate next-gen versions on Xbox Series X and PS5 in the future, but developer CD Projekt Red has warned fans that they won't release alongside the new systems. Instead, they'll come further down the line after the consoles have launched, and following the release of the Xbox One, PS4, PC, and Stadia versions of the game. Quote, In terms of Microsoft's console, like I said, we have officially confirmed both the update and the next the cross-gen of a... Ugh. Crush then availability, meaning that you'll be able to play the game from the get-go on the next gen. CD Projekt SVP of B- Business Development Michael, oh God, Noel Kowski said, according to Video Games Chronicle. However, when it comes to a proper full-blown next gen version, that's going to come later. We haven't announced when, and I don't have a new comment here on that. End quote. Noel Kowski also reiterated that Sony hasn't said whether PS5 will support enhanced PS4 games like Microsoft already has for Xbox Series X and Xbox One. So there's no official word for whether PS5 will be able to play an enhanced PS4 version of Cyberpunk 2077. Quote, there's no official announcement coming from PlayStation, so we really can't confirm or deny anything, Noah Kowski said. It's PlayStation that first needs to address these issues, and then we're happy to make a comment, but we can't jump the gun ahead of them, end quote. Noah Kowski also confirmed that Cyberpunk 2077 is still on track for release in September. There are currently no plans to delay the release of the game. So first things first, let's let's kind of dissect this because this was a conference call uh, to I think it, it was it internally because I don't believe Cyberpunk is a public traded company. Whatever the case may be, they were having a company wide call to discuss. Uh, uh, their future endeavors to talk about the game launching on uh, on release date. So with that, I have a question for you, uh, Adam, going right back to you. 
Um, do we really think at this point Cyberpunk 2077 is going to be released in September? I mean, I, I want to hope more than hope that it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I obviously, we got the announcement that Last of Us is gone, Iron Man's gone. They're still holding back on Ghost of Tsushima, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. So the only thing that I can I can imagine is they hope there's going to be a little bit of a change in September that maybe, you know, some stores will be a little more lax with their social distancing restrictions and hopefully things will right. be a little less crazy. And, you know, if anybody can do it, it's CD Projekt Red because those guys are like and girls are magicians. I mean, they're just they're, they do incredible work, do really good stuff. And, it, you know, I got to believe the game is really in the final phases of hopefully, you know, bug like bug crunching and doing all this kind of stuff and i think it'll be ready it's just mm. it's so hard to predict what's going to happen with <laughs> the state of the world because yeah, um, you know this game is definitely on the level of like a last of us and i'm sure they want to have a big splash and get everything rolling and things yeah. like that so uh, it's it's so tough because i want to believe and i want to be optimistic that you know, we won't just be all be stuck in our homes with the same situation <laughs> in September. But and the same games. How can we do that? It's impossible. Yeah. At least we yeah. have Final Fantasy VII, so that's all that matters. I mean, at least. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say yes. Okay. It's gonna still release, but yeah. I I am an optimistic person. So yeah. I like to look at things glass half full, but it's gonna be it'll be tough. It, it'll be tough. Yeah. No, it definitely will be. And you mentioned something about Ghost of Tsushima, like how, yeah, Sony is still not saying much if Ghost is going to be coming out. What is it? June 26th? Like they've something like that. Yeah. Yeah. They've, they've made no comment. Do you think that's the next domino to, to fall? Why do you think Sony's a little bit hesitant? Of, so I think of dropping def- that date. Yeah. I think definitely it's the next one. Cause once again, it's a huge triple a title mm-hmm. by sucker punch and it's a, a big game. And I, probably one of my most anticipated games ever. I've talked Same. about this before that it's like, this is the game that I've always dreamed of. Like I always wanted Assassin's Creed to do the feudal Japan thing, mm-hmm. but now Sucker yeah. Punch is doing it. I'm like, I didn't even know I wanted this and it's amazing. <laughs> but I think also Sony is trying to take a wait and see thing because, you know, the biggest thing, I think one of the craziest things, you know, with Last of Us, when they delayed it, they refunded everyone's digital purchases on the yeah. PlayStation store, which yeah. is crazy. So, you know, if they did the same thing for Ghost of Tsushima, they'd have to once again give that money back and do all that stuff. So it's true. I'm sure they're going to do everything they can to keep that launch. And hopefully, once again, things are a little different in June. I know it's a lot sooner than September, but, you know, you never know what, what could happen. So I, I bet you they're they're looking at it every day and, and there's probably crazy conversations going on all day long. But it's I think that one's definitely in a lot yeah. more trouble than Cyberpunk. I, I think just retail right now in general is in, in this very weird uh like fog of we don't know what's coming next and we really can't see even a week ahead of anything. And right now I know, I think the country was France that they're ordering uh, companies like Amazon going, Hey, listen, if this is not a necessity, you can't ship this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just to the bare essentials because people are being overworked. They're getting uh, really sick. And so, and again, underpaid so you know they're ordering them to just go if it's not essentials if it's not you know i don't know if it's not lysol wipes you ain't shipping it for the most part so that's something to also take into consideration and i know it sucks to to hear that but it's something that ought to be kind of said i know kyle i won't turn to you this question instead uh, i'm gonna ask what joseph uh, michael owens writes in he asks my biggest question Will Sony follow up Microsoft's CD Projekt uh, Red's lead and offer free upgrade to PS4 and to PS5? Because like in this article states, they said, hey, listen, there's going to be an Xbox version. It's not a launch game. So if you're expecting, you know, with your Xbox Series X at, at, at the gate to be playing, you know, this game, you will be. It just won't be tailored to the Xbox Series X, it'll still be running at the Xbox One uh, specs. It will come later down the line, but when it comes down the line, we can maybe, again, they won't put down a date, but I think last time I heard it was like March or April they were planning something, um, that later down the line, it'll be a free upgrade. We have not yet heard that from PlayStation, and their silence is starting to scare people. Do you think, like, like what Michael Owens asks, Will they fo- follow up their lead or will they do something sadly different, which is charge you with an upgrade? Uh, yeah, it's it's weird. It also, like, I'm fully preparing this to just be a something that Xbox is doing that Sony is not. 
because mm. um, that could also be a possibility, just a difference between both platforms. But I would also like to believe that this just makes a whole lot of sense. And I think it would be to continue Sony's good favor with everybody um, to offer this program in some way, shape or form mm. for, for an, uh, an upgrade. Uh, maybe not even a free upgrade. Like maybe it's, it's for a small small price uh, because there is going to be a ton of work to go into making a PS5 version right. for it. So like that's money that's got to come from somewhere. Um, yeah. If yeah, everybody's... I'm sure they're working on it, getting the details and wording right before. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it would be a really awesome consumer friendly move. And you have to also take into consideration possibly, I mean, we saw Microsoft knock on the door a few months ago to CD project red that CD is probably getting some chunk of change for people that are upgrading anyway to kind of incentivize them from maybe Microsoft again, just hearsay on my part, but it would totally sure. make sense if that's the case. And Sony not really willing to do that because they are the market leader and going, listen, backwards compatibility is good enough. If it's a $10, $20 upgrade, that's all you get. I hope that's not the case. I hope PlayStation's as consumer friendly as Microsoft's here because that would be a huge, not necessarily deal breaker for me, but a huge, uh, I don't know, uh, disappointment. There you go. That's the word I wanted to use. Yeah, it'd be a bummer. It would yeah. be. because I, I. But at the same exact time, am I playing Cyberpunk 2077 in, You know, by the time this gets an upgrade? I don't know. So with that, Adam, uh, this question goes to you. Again, will Sony follow Microsoft's suit? Will they give us a free upgrade? What do you think? I think yes. Yeah. I think if you look at the past, if you look at Sony's decisions and even Microsoft's decisions, it's these, I mean, Sony and Microsoft are literally two boxers in a ring trading blows. Mm. I mean, one does something, the other follows it. Good dates all the way back to the Xbox One reveal with the TV, 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 Call of Duty thing. No use games, all that stuff. And then PlayStation made it so easy to share things. And Xbox was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. And then the whole cross-play situation with Fortnite and all this other stuff. And mm -hmm. Sony getting all the hate. And then they're like, uh, yeah, well, let's, we'll do cross-play. We can, <laughs> we, can, we can do it. We got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like things like that. And, you know, I, I think Xbox is just making so many incredible forward-facing consumer-first decisions mm -hmm. and like i said anytime sony goes against that it's not going to look good and i'll tell you what i mean yeah playstation is the market leader and i think they'll obviously have a big lead in the next you know next generation but all these little things are are adding up and microsoft keeps making these good decisions and mm -hmm. if they keep giving these free upgrades that's another reason why you should go xbox and do all that stuff so mm -hmm. i i don't know I, I see it happening i think microsoft planted too big of a flag and I yeah. think they gave them enough time. And you can even see it with the launch plans of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One or Series X because all you're hearing is, like, they're waiting for the other to announce the price. And, like, we can't go too much higher than them doing all that stuff. So yeah. I think when, when we get to the point where these systems, obviously they're different. Xbox on paper looks a little more powerful, certain things like that. But they are playing the same games, doing the same things. And if one is looking that much better, it, it could be, it could be trouble. So yeah. I think Sony should be very careful with those things. I think you're totally right as well. I think Microsoft making all these awesome forward thinking decisions, whether it's things like game pass, that looks really phenomenal. And, you know, talk about trading blows. I just got an email. They're like, Hey, you play PlayStation now. Tell us what you think of it. And the, the way that the, the survey was kind of uh, lined up was, would you like first party games on here to stay? What is your thoughts on? <laughs> and it, you know, it, it kind of gave me the, the the thought of, yeah, they're really dipping their toe in the water to see how warm it is before they jump into things, yep. because they don't have the luxury of, you know, the Xbox brand having you know pop a Microsoft there on their shoulder so they could get infused with billions of dollars. You know, they are a smaller company. Sony relies on PlayStation to bring in a huge uh, a chunk of, of of their profits. So, you know, they're not they're not able to take the crazy risks that are on the long run have huge payouts because it's going to net them some serious losses. And we've even seen that in the past with Microsoft, but they're willing to take those steps uh, to hopefully get a huge gain out of it in the long run. And I hope things like Game Pass, things like Crossplay work out for Xbox in their benefit and work for out for all of us in the benefit. So I, I think you're, you're right there on the money that, yeah, this is ultimately a move where Sony has to really calculate, think about what they're going to do next 
and really decide if they want to take the leap on. I really do think so. And I want to ask you this one more question, Adam. You say that Microsoft has planted their flag and they've given PlayStation time. Is Do you think PlayStation's reserved nature on not giving us info on a, you know, bi-weekly basis like Microsoft is doing. Do you think that's hurting Sony in the long run? Do you think that actually maybe hurts Xbox in the long run where they lead up to launch and they got nothing nothing loaded in the in the chamber? So I I do not think it's going to hurt them. I think you know us us as humans, we have a very short-term memory and like a <laughs> short-term kind of feeling about things and yeah. yeah, well now it looks like I mean Finally, they announced the dual sense after like right. all that time. So we actually do have something to go off of instead of a logo from CES. But, but we have, uh, yeah, they haven't really announced stuff. But once they do and they announce, they should give us a glimpse of God of War or the next Spider-Man or the, we get the system. No one's going to remember that they had months without announcing it. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, it's, that's, the, that's the weird thing. Like, in the short term, yeah, like, definitely Xbox has better kind of, I think, mind share and people are feeling good about it. But... Sony's got the exclusives and they've got the games and you know the sexiness will come out and <laughs> everyone's <laughs> going to forget a lot of those other things and I I don't think it's going to be yeah. I, I think it's going to be a, a long lost memory that no one really even talks about too much. All they need to do is show Aloy and it's game over. Yep. Yeah. I think that's what a lot else, of people forget. Uh, well, oh, does, anybody, does anybody else think that in the dual sense announcement when they talked about pulling an arrow back with the R2 trigger was a slight nod to Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Yeah, absolutely. Like, ah, absolutely. What do you think? Yeah, I think that 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 is their big next gen. <laughs> that is their big next gen game and they're going to flaunt that whether it's a launch day or a launch, you know, window release, that's definitely uh, a thing. Oh, yeah. I was definitely. also thinking of, of Ellie as well. But yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. that's a terrific uh, way of thinking because like, you know, I'm sorry, Sean, I'm going to throw you under the bus. But like when when you know, uh, Cyberpunk announced, hey, we're not going to do anything in terms of, like, you know, say anything for PlayStation when it comes to Cyberpunk 2077. You know, Sean Capri goes, hashtag still waiting for greatness and, and throws a little shade PlayStation's away. But, like, at the end of the day, Sean, are you going to really give a shit when in a month from now, Ju you know, you know, June, May, whatever the release is, they come out going, yeah, we have it too. And, like, at the end of the day, if they have it too and then they go... And also, we understand Last of Us is a thing, so Last of Us is now like a release window for the PlayStation 5, uh, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn release window for PS5, NAC 3, all hail NAC, then everybody's the going to forget. <laughs> you know, everybody's going to forget, everybody's going to look at Next Gen Spider-Man, and, and we can't sit here and pretend that at the end of the day, what's going to matter, the power or Spider-Man 2? Because I'm going to tell you, Spider-Man 2 <laughs> wins out nine times out of ten. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's what I've been saying ever since this whole thing conversations come up. I don't, power is is means really nothing to me. What matters to me is what I'm being able to see on the screen. And well, play. It's, it's so convenient you say that now, Kyle. <laughs> Well, what do you mean? I've been saying know. it forever. <laughs> I don't know. People on Twitter yell at me and they go, "That's what you say now because it doesn't have power." Uh, but my question here for you, Kyle, even if like they announce, "Hey, Aloy." launch you know uh the, the the launch title is horizon zero dawn 2 but mm -hmm. you have to pay 20 bucks for for the upgrade of cyberpunk 2077 does, does that still outweigh it because that is a shitty move if they still charge you sure uh, you i also burn. can probably just play regular cyberpunk and not pay for the upgrade all right how dare you <laughs> i could also save 20 bucks and put it towards like a smaller ps5 launch game Hey, Adam, are you ready to feel really weird for a sec? Yeah. Like about like 45 seconds? I'm ready. Hey, Kyle, read the next yeah. tidbit uh, on uh, the docket. The next here. story comes from some guy, Adam Bankhurst at IGN. Uh, PlayStation to <laughs> offer Uncharted the Nathan Drake Collection and Journey for free for a limited time. PlayStation will offer Uncharted the Nathan Drake Collection and Journey for free as part of its Play at Home initiative that also includes a $10 million creative fund for indie developers impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. PlayStation President Jim Ryan revealed the details of the $10 million fund and free games on PlayStation Blog, but also said more information and participation criteria will be revealed at a later date for those developers looking to take advantage of it. Quote, 
Independent developers are vital to the heart and soul of the gaming community, and we understand the hardships and financial struggles that many smaller gaming studios are facing, Ryan said. As far as the games, Journey and Uncharted The Nathan Drake Collection will be free to all PS4 customers, not just those with PlayStation Plus, from April 15th to May 5th, to help keep the PlayStation community entertained at home. It's important to note that once you redeem the games, they are yours to keep forever. Mm. For those in China and Germany, Sony will be offering Knack 2 instead of Uncharted The Nathan Drake Collection. <laughs> Quote, During these days of physical distancing, fans have turned to gaming for moments of respite and enjoyment, Ryan explained. At Sony Interactive Entertainment, we are privileged to bring this much-needed entertainment. We know this is just one small step, and we are thankful to be able to offer this support to our players, our communities, and our partners. End quote. So it's really cool to think that April's free game is Uncharted 4, and they're giving everybody the uh, Nathan Drake trilogy, so you mm-hmm. can play awesome. every single Uncharted game except for Locke's Legacy, which you need to which buy. Which is on PS Now. And Golden Abyss. Well, Golden Abyss. <laughs> Listen, Joe, know. don't talk shit about Golden Can't Abyss. Can't shine a light on the Vita or whatever. <laughs> Oh no, God. it's dead. Rubbing it's the like, dust off of the, the parchment. No, you know? it's, it's, it's such dead. a good game too. It's so yeah. sad. It's it's great until the last level where it's just bullshit. Oh, I don't even remember. <laughs> I don't. Even I just remember trying to like shine a light on my Vita and it never working. <laughs> uh, Adam, I got a question for you because this brilliant yeah. person wrote this brilliant piece, <laughs> and I wanted to highlight this one part here: ten million dollar fund uh, for indies in in this yeah. time. Um. From what you know, uh, how have indies been affected by the the current situation? And then just a follow-up question. How important are indies, if the situation doesn't go away anytime soon, for next generation? So I think the indie scene is supremely important mm. for you know the in-between releases of all the AAA titles. But what's very interesting about indie titles is they're a lot smaller teams. A lot of times they're already working remotely and doing all that stuff anyway. So they're actually probably more equipped to deal with this mm. than anything. And I think, you know, PlayStation obviously sees that. So if they're able to support them and give them some more money to be able for them to do whatever they need to and ensure these games still come out while some of these big AAA titles where they need the big retail presence and the big marketing campaigns and pushes, then I think like indies can really save the day in some of this. And you, if you can get like, you know, a journey or an inside or one of these games that these smaller games that kind of come out of nowhere and just kind of take the world by storm. That's a huge win for your platform. So yeah. I think it's a huge thing. I think it's obviously a very great gesture by PlayStation to do this, but also a very smart business move because these developers, especially if this thing goes longer than everyone's hoping yeah. it will be like indie games are the things you're going to be playing and you're going to be looking forward to because a lot of these big AAA titles, like I said, they're going to wait for their big, their big moment in the light the spotlight while the indies are going to be, you know, able to just kind of, they, they don't need that huge push that the triple A's do. So do you think that this was like a, you, you say smart business decision, right? But like, do you think like, not to say that they always had this plan, but they're like, listen, we're going to probably need some indie help. So we'll have this big fund. Well, it's a good PR <laughs> message makes everybody feel good. But secretly in the background of the puppet master. And this is going according <laughs> to plan. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, 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 business i mean people yeah. you know they, they think of video games as fun and happiness and joy but it's a business behind that through and through and every decision that's made obviously there there's good intentions behind it it's not saying everyone's like yeah. an evil like mustache twisting like kyle evil person in the background <laughs> but you know every decision that's made mm. obviously you want it to look good forward facing but you want it to help your bottom line and help your company continue to grow and do stuff so i think it's a little bit of both and and honestly i don't really think there's anything wrong with that inherently mm. Because I do think that, you know, it, it helps them, it helps the indies, and it's a good thing that they're trying to do. So it's, I, like I said, there's there's always ulterior motives, unfortunately, because, yeah. like I said, you, you do have a business to run, so, yeah. but I think it's, I think it's a good gesture. And talking about good gestures, Sony going out and saying, hey, everybody, what up? We're dropping Journey, <laughs> we're jumping Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection. I'll toss this one over to you, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Um, why not Knack 2? <laughs> <laughs> Mac 3 is confirmed. Can we just say that? Is it? Do it you think? Means it. <laughs> no, I wish. No, I, 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 just, I, just love the, I love the internet reaction. <laughs> yeah. He's I, not I, confirmed. 
Who knows? <laughs> it's um, the only launch title for PS5. <laughs> it's the only game on PS5, period. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why NAC 2 is is mm. only in, in China and Germany. Um, it's so random. It so really random. is. I'm trying to think. Maybe they they already maybe Nathan Drake Collection is their PS Plus game for the month. Maybe it I has to know. do with some type of weird Chinese regulation, but why it's not mm. in Germany. Yeah. But what's cool about yeah. these is you don't need PlayStation Plus for these games. That's which true. Is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's uh yeah, it's 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 very odd. I kinda it wanna is. yeah. I wanna maybe research, maybe but. Uncharted is just <laughs> not that. a not a high priority in those in those yeah. countries. Yeah. It's possible. Uh, but it's super cool. You can play all of Uncharted right now. What are you waiting for? Yeah. One of the premier gaming franchises in all video games. Definitely. Have you yeah. tried have you tried the Uncharted uh collection, Kyle? I yeah, I platinum mm. two of them. Um, nice. impressive. Yeah, I did Jesus. not do the first one because the first one there's a crazy hard level on crushing mm. that I just cannot get past. Mm. It's the one with like the underground pillars with the water everywhere in the ground. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. I just can't get past it. So Uncharted yeah. One's just not a good game. We need to get over that as well. <laughs> Whoa. Maybe for uh, this relatively time. speaking. Relatively, relatively speaking. But yeah. To, well, yeah. But to me, I, 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 every time I'm like, I'm gonna try my best to get into it, and then I look back and I'm just like. I'm not going to. <laughs> Compared to the other entries in the series, yes, mm. it is by far the the uh, the least one. I would say. So if if you know I'm I'm walking into this, I just got my free game, uh, and I'm about to social distance. Distance, Kyle. Am I going with Uncharted one? Am I going with two? Am I going with three first? If you have never played any Uncharted game, you start with one. Yeah, you have to. You mm. have you especially have to. you can't especially jump into two. Especially once you get to four, because that's like mm -hmm. the, you know, it's callback city and yep. it's so much better if you've played the whole series. So, yeah, Absolutely. It's, I would I, I know it's a little tougher to get to, but you got to play the whole thing. It's Nate and, and, and Elena meeting for the first time. Yeah. You got the Sully and, and Nate relationship being, you know, started. Funny thing. F funny you say that when I played two and then like when because uh, that's when I got into Uncharted, I played two first. And when yeah. Elena goes, oh, is this the New Year's model? I'm like. I don't get it. Where is it? <laughs> See? <laughs> but then I got, I got caught up point. this it was speed, and I was just like, this game's yeah. amazing. One of the best games ever made. And don't forget, if you want to play Lux, Lost Legacy, which is mm. one of the best Uncharted games ever, it is on PS Now. So you can l literally sit there and play all of Uncharted. It's true. In a week. It's awesome. Hey, yeah. Kyle. And you can watch the movie. The yeah. movie. Oh God! It's never coming out. It's never coming out. <laughs> Wait, can I can I give a shout out to one of the commenters Go on IGN it. on my article? Who so I I I have picked the blog roll image of of the cover, which is you know Nathan Drake looking out into the distance, mm. and somebody commented it's like, "Look, it's Nathan looking for his movie." <laughs> I was like, That's incredible. <laughs> I was like, sometimes comments are good. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they are fantastic. Sometimes <laughs> so good. Oh, and whatever the next game is, one of the shiny odd treasure is just gonna be a film reel. Yeah, so really? uncharted. <laughs> you're so you got it finally. You're, you're collecting like up. like fil film reels, and one says like Sam Raimi, and then the other one's like yes. Venom oh, director. That's, that's a amazing. whole collectible. Uh, yeah. You yeah. have to collect all the director's scripts. That's good stuff. <laughs> Kyle, we got some flash news. Would you like to read yeah. it for us? Sure, from Matt, from Matt Kim at IGN. Uh, PSA, PS4 exclusives listed for PC on Amazon are an error. Earlier mm. today, listing for, listings for several games, including PlayStation 4 exclusives, were listed for PC on a French Amazon page. Sony has confirmed to IGN that the listing isn't accurate. A series of listings on Amazon France seemingly suggested exclusive PlayStation 4 games like Days Gone and Bloodborne was coming to the PC. Mm. However, Sony responded to a request from IGN that, quote, the listings are not accurate. We have made no announcements to bring these games to, to PC, end quote. So, um... I'm going to throw my good friend Sean Capri under the bus again. Man, I, he's taking a beating. Listen, this I, well, I got to swing where I can here. When he's just like, oh, so Xbox did this before. I'm like, an hour from now, they're going to correct. And uh, so, something's going to prove that this is wildly inaccurate. And yeah, an hour afterwards, Amazon France put up Mario Odyssey. Uh, <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> coming to PC. Kyle, <laughs> what were your, your first thoughts on on these games supposedly coming to PC, and then your reaction to it after it turned out to be a rumor. Were you a little bit disappointed? Were you, were you like this is just bound to happen? Where where were you? Uh, well, personally, I'm just disappointed when Bloodborne gets any sort of shout out. Like it, it deserves to just go away. 
That's a dig at Joe for new listeners. Joe loves Bloodborne. That's I joke cold. about him with it. Um, <laughs> Joe, but your, you, face, your face was priceless. You, you know, you know my take on this. If mm-hmm. if this was real, give more people the chance to play these games. Like, yes, go for it. Mm-hmm. Any any way possible to experience these games. Absolutely. Oh, uh, screw that. PS4 for, for life. Everyone else sucks. <laughs> yeah, let me go flip a table and breathe heavily yeah. into a camera while I'm... People need to grow up. I just, I just laugh at these people. It's just insane. Uh, so to, they ruined everything. <laughs> to find out it was a rumor, I was like, oh, so this is basically like the moms that would come into GameStop and ask for Mario on PlayStation. Yeah. That's just kind of what it felt like. <laughs> and now they got oh, what you they got wanted. Oh, you got the new Battletoads? <laughs> you got the new... Which I guess is, you know, somewhat real now, yeah. but like... Hey, can we get get the Battletoads on uh, PS3, please? Like, no, shut up. <laughs> get out of here. Get out of here. No, it, it's funny that you say that because, like, my first thought was, oh, cool, I get the Platinum Bloodborne again. But uh, when mm, I saw you this. you have the Platinum in that? Oh, God, of course, Adam. Damn, well done, it's, sir. It took I hear me it every impressive. week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many days it's been? I'll look it up in a second. Um, Adam, my, my, go, go into you here. When you hear, like, yeah, PlayStation games coming to PC, what is your your reaction to that? Do you think it, it is Xbox's influence, or or well, I'll just start here. What were you, what were, what was your head at thinking about you know these games coming to PC and then the rug being pulled out from under you? So I mean, when, when I think the first one they talked about was Days Gone, if mm-hmm. I remember correctly, mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah, I see it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, sure. I mean, I I think the more the merrier, the more people that can play these games, the better. I think in today's day and age with you know, especially people trying to get towards the streaming future where you can play games anywhere. I know we're not quite there yet, so I think this is kind of like the stopgap where, mm. you know, the people can still play them on PC until you can literally play it on your Apple Watch <laughs> in like five or ten years <laughs> or something. But, yeah, I, I think it was great. But then, yeah, they when they keep, kept getting more and more and more, I'm like, there's no way Sony's going to release them this quickly and this much and just say, hey, you could go play everything on PC. So yeah. that was one thing when I was like, eh. But I think... I'm I'm all for them putting more games on PC. I think it's it's a it's a good choice, and I think it would be. But really Xbox cool. did it first. They did. <laughs> yeah, it's uh Which means it's Jim funny. Ryan's a liar. I don't n- yes, know what that definitely. notion is. Um, <laughs> uh, so like, yeah, my my first reaction was just like, this is obviously fake. When I saw Persona Five, I was just like, maybe. But then when I was just like, yeah, like Days oh, yeah, Gone, Bloodborne, that. like. Yeah, all these games. And first and foremost, it's been 1,850 days since the launch of Bloodborne. Um, But like when I saw that, I was like, no, there's no way that any of this is true. Because if you just think back a few weeks ago um, where they literally said, hey, we're starting with Horizon Zero Dawn. You know, Herman came out. They're like, they did great work. We have this. We're going to try it out. We're going to see what happens. I'm like, there's no way they would say that and then just all, all, all of a sudden, just uh, the floodgates open without this game no even. Way. Yeah, not Sony. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They are so, uh, you know, careful about that. So to me, I was like, yeah, this is obviously false, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna run with it. My, my other take, and I'm trying to get my thought out here as well, is, I, I, I honestly thought for a second that these games was just like a placeholder because they didn't have PlayStation 5 SKUs. Like, I mm. thought, like, this would be really neat oh, if, like, insane. yeah, like, Days Gone has, like, a PS5 update, Last of Us yeah. PS5 update. Definitely. You know, uh, Royal has a P5, uh, PlayStation 5 update. Like, that's what I kind of thought. I'm like, that would be pretty damn rad. And so I was a little disappointed when um, when I got the news. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Uh, let's get into the next topic for discussion. Kyle, take it away. Andy Robinson from VGC writes, Capcom is working on a Resident Evil 4 remake. Following its reimaginings of Resident Evil 2 and 3, multiple development sources have told VGC that the Resident Evil 4 remake has now entered full production with an estimated release window in 2022. Development is being led by Osaka-based M2, the new studio founded by former Platinum Games head Tatsuya Minami, which has been preparing for the project since 2018. However, similar to how 2020's Resident Evil 3 was directed by company Red Works, Capcom's internal teams and other external studios are likely to lend significant development resources. Update. 
More alleged details have emerged on Capcom's Resident Evil 4 remake project, including claims it will be co-developed by parts of the RE2 and Devil May Cry 5 team. It's understood that the remake has the blessing of original game director Shinji Mikami, who officially declined an approach to lead the project himself, but has provided informal advice on its direction. The studio helming the remake has been in operation since 2018 and is comprised of many former Platinum and Capcom employees. So before the show, Adam, I know, Kyle, you have no interest in any of this spooky game. Spooky. Nope. I ain't Too touching scared. it. Uh, so this one, right for you, uh, Adam, or right to you, rather. Um, the most famous Seamus I've ever met in my entire life writes in, what would you want to see from an RE4 remake? Because we talked about it before the show. You are a Resident Evil fan. You're not the biggest in the world, but you're a big fan of Resident Evil 4. So what would you want to see out of a Resident Evil 4 remake if this is true, and do you think it's true? Uh, I do think it's true. Yeah. I think it's it's inevitable. I mean, Resident Evil 4 is one of the most beloved games ever. I know a lot of people were kind of upset that they were even trying to touch Resident Evil 4. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I mean, I understand. But I think, first of all, what people don't realize is how incredible Resident Evil 4 is going to look in the, in the RE engine, mm -hmm. which is just like one of the best engines of, you know, on the market today. Oh, yeah. And I also think I, I want to play RE4 with the current control schemes that like RE2 and RE3 have. I mean, mm -hmm. tank controls had a purpose, obviously, and you know what? You can go back and play that game. It's not going to go anywhere. It's kind of like with Final Fantasy VII, where that game's not going anywhere no matter what happened with the remake. But I, I kind of want to see a little reimagining and kind of play it with modern standards, with the new engine, seeing all that stuff and, and all these awesome graphics and things like that. Yeah. And I think, it's, I think that's really what I want to see. I mean, I don't want to see them really change up too much or do anything too crazy, but... I really like what they've been doing with RE2 mm -hmm. and RE3, and it's uh, I, I would like to see RE4 in, in the new engine and see kind of what they can do with it. I think it'd be really cool. That's that's where I'm at with it as well. Again, like I'm not the biggest. I, I always say that I'm a new fan to the series because for me, it's seven, it's two remake, three remake was a thing as well um, that I, I liked a lot, but not nearly enough as uh, two and and eight. So I or sorry, seven. So I definitely understand why why there's some like reservations because four is held to such this pinnacle where every time I'm like, oh yeah, I never played RE4. People are like, are you out of here? <laughs> exactly. Adam, What's wrong like, with you? Yeah. Uh, and I'm just like, man. It, I've even played part of RE4. <laughs> did you really? So yeah. maybe now I do need to just, you know what? Maybe. It's on the Switch, man. Is Play it? it there. Is it? Wait, is it? I think it's also on PS4, right? There's trophies mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, yeah. I believe every yeah. RE game is on PS4. That's crazy. All By right, the way, man. shout out to RE7 in VR. Still one of the best things I've ever played in my entire life. Yes, yeah. <laughs> huge shout. I love, I love that game so much. But like for so me, good. I'm like, yeah, it only made sense because they did two, they did three. A lot of people were like, well, why not Code Veronica? Because yeah. it's not a four attached to it. They're doing it just purely numerically. So it totally <laughs> made sense for me. And if they got the original uh, creator's blessing, I'm totally fine with it. Because yeah. for me, like a lot of people are like, and, and maybe I'll, I'll throw this back to you. Um, when people are like, well, the original director isn't taking it, so I don't have much faith in it. I, I think of it as, hey, listen, it, it kind of like with George Lucas with Star Wars. Maybe this is a bad point. But George is just like, <laughs> I'm done. I'm going to okay, throw it okay. to JJ. And JJ, we trust. And we did. And he gave us two good movies. Force Awakens is great. It's great. It's my favorite. It, and you know what? Say what you will about Rise of Skywalker. It's a good film. I had fun. It's good. But It should have been like two or three movies. Yeah. But at the same exact time, <laughs> way better than what anything George did. And, and <laughs> so instead of going back to my original point, you already hit a grand slam with, with, with the trilogy, right? You don't want to go out there and make more. You want to just go, hey, listen, I have it. I'm sipping peanut coladas on, on a beach. I'm fine where I am and kind of have someone else have that responsibility and just kind of give them a advice on the side. I, yeah. I don't see any problem with this. Totally Awful. on board. Good. With that, Kyle, because yeah. we got we got to hit these out of the park fast. Let's talk about what Jason Schreier has at Kotaku. Some good news. Hey, finally, from Rockstar. 18 months after Red Dead Redemption 2, Rockstar has made big cultural changes. Last fall, nearly a year after the, the release of Red Dead Redemption 2, top Rockstar executive Jennifer Colby sent out an email to staff with a list of bullet-pointed initiatives to improve Rockstar's culture. 
Rockstar, the game developer behind Grand Theft Auto and many other highly selling, often controversial games, had been widely criticized a year prior for cultural issues and extensive overtime. Quote, in these last several months, we have undertaken a lot of work across every area of the company, looking at our processes to determine what works and what doesn't, what we are great at and what we could approve could improve colby wrote in the email which was reviewed by kotaku we hope that the majority of you have felt some of these positive changes already and those that haven't soon will end quote colby went on to outline some of their plans for 2020 flexible schedules for developers at rockstar studios from california to the united kingdom management and leadership training anonymous surveys to collect feedback from employees regular updates on the company's future games and updates and better communication all around the tenor of the email was straightforward after the controversies of 2018, Rockstar wanted to do better. They always wanted to cut back on crunch, the ubiquitous, ubiquitous practice of working nights and weekends to finish video games. Quote, we have taken con conscious steps to improve our approach to developing games in order to reduce the need for overtime, Kobe wrote. We realize we still have plenty to do in this area and will continue to take steps so we can more accurately predict and schedule games and DLC in a way that is more sustainable, but still allows us the creative flexibility to iterate on the incredibly ambitious and complex games we make, end quote. As one Rockstar, Rockstar staffer described it to Kotaku, management seems to now be set on running the company like a company. Rockstar declined to provide an interview or comment for this story. Quote, it does seem like a healthier cultural culture overall, said a second Rockstar developer. We'll see in a year or two if I'm pulling my hair out, but it does seem like we're moving in the right direction for being a company the size we are, end quote. Even today, with production slowed down and staff working from home due to the coronavirus pandemic, the company's management seems to be saying the right things. Quote, they keep em emphasizing that it's normal to not be productive and our focus should be on our health and taking care of our families, said a third Rockstar employee. So I remember us talking about this and having that difficult uh, discussion about Red Dead Redemption 2, if we were going to pick this up and kind of, you know, support poor work environments. Um, seeing this story being played out gives me a lot of hope that these stories are important, that they are something that pushes the industry further uh, mm -hmm. um, into a better place. Kyle, what were your first reactions to this news, to what we've we've heard here? And please, please, please give Jason Schreier, everybody here, but give Jason Schreier a click because there's way more to this story. Uh, but again, what were your thoughts? I think it's awesome. Uh, we're, we here at the Trophy Room are very much, um, we want to make sure like the people who make these things that we love are mm -hmm. have enough time to uh, relax and basically be human beings and not being forced to the end of their end of their wit. Like mm -hmm. they need, they need to have time to be take care of themselves, healthy, both physically and mentally. And the fact that Rockstar is making some good moves to ensure that everyone's life is easier and better uh, for a working environment is awesome. Um, mm. I, I hope that seeing as how the article from when this went out has uh, created some change within Rockstar, I can only hope that that same change will happen with uh, Naughty Dog mm. um, in, in, in the future because, like, yes, we hear crunch all the time, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I know what crunch is like, but... It doesn't sound good. So any any step that it that that will be ended and make it easier, I am all for. Mm. All right, I like that. It's nice and positive. But let's get into the shady underbelly of this. <laughs> Adam, do you think that this is this is a a step being taken because they don't want people to unionize? I mean, I I'm sure there's probably some of that go, going into it, but I also think. It's it's a result of people like Jason Schreier coming out with these stories because you know before Schreier came out and just breaks every story of, of all time ever, yeah. but <laughs> like a lot of this stuff was happening behind the scenes because by nature game development is a very secretive industry, so people don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. Mm. And now that we have such a platform where people can finally tell their stories anonymously, they can be safe, they can really get to the bottom of this and like say, hey, we're not going to accept this anymore in our industry. Yeah, I think that's a big thing because like. Sure, Rockstar could keep being the way they are, but they're going to lose talent. They're going to keep getting these stories written about them. And, yeah, it's – it's. I mean, 
obviously a big majority of the public are still going to buy Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption. That's the unfortunate thing of our world. Mm -hmm. But uh, this kind of stuff makes change. And I just can't applaud Jason enough for doing this stuff and getting this word out there and other people like him who are making these things happen because that's how you make change. I mean, I think you guys mentioned, like, should we even buy Red Dead Redemption 2? You guys sounds like Mm -hmm. you may have had that conversation. And that's such a tough one because... Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, you're also not supporting the developers you're trying to help. Exactly, yeah. But you're also saying, hey, we support your business decisions. Mm-hmm. Keep doing it. So I mean, it's, recently it's, that's been Borderlands 3 with yeah, all the issues Yeah, right, exactly. There. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. That is a great example. So it's a very tough situation. There's not an easy answer to that, mm-hmm. but this kind of stuff is what really can make change because this literally shines a spotlight on what's happening and what the problem is and saying, hey, you're not going to be able to hide under a rock anymore. We know what's happening. We have people coming out and saying that. So that what really makes a difference. Um, I mean, you know, once again, as far as your union thing, I feel like that's always in the back of the minds of these companies. So I'm sure there is something like behind that. But I also think it's just they got caught. So yeah. <laughs> it's an unfortunate thing. Usually, you know, you don't if once you get caught, things are a lot different and you probably wouldn't have done it before. Uh, hopefully you want to believe that they would have. But it. This definitely sped up the process. As I, uh, <laughs> every time I, I say this line, I'm going to Shawshank Redemption this. I'd like to tell you <laughs> that Rockstar <laughs> came out there uh, and did the right thing. No, I would like to think. I do declare. <laughs> I do declare. I'd like to think that he won the good fight. No, um, get, getting it back into it. I'd like to think that Rockstar did have a heart to heart with themselves going, okay, so, you know, the main games are over. Let's huddle around. Something smells a little fishy here. Everybody kind of j- just roll call it. Are we overworking you? And everybody raise their hand type of thing. That's that's what I'm hoping happened. And it, it looks like it has because they're doing things that from what it shows here are good. And it's also showing that, looks, listen, you know, I, I hear with a lot of indie devs that they're like, we try our best not to crunch. It's hard not to. Uh, especially now these day and age uh, where you're just stuck in your home. But, hey, you know, we have to think about each other first and to see, starting to see the crack where, you know, these huge conglomerates, these huge mega corporations are coming together going, maybe you don't work our dev teams like shit. And everybody kind of start nodding and agreeing. That's a hopeful sign. Now, hopefully, it's not just 2K, and we're starting to see that maybe in Ubisoft. We're starting to see that in Activision, Blizzard, and, and EA, and et cetera. But it's awesome to see that they're all starting to take a look at each other going, what we're doing to each other is kind of fucked up. <laughs> and and trying to course correct and to fix it and to have a balance. And I, I, I like to see that progress is being made there. Uh, let's get into our last story of the podcast kyle take it away sir michael mcwhorter from polygon writes gamescom will go digital in face of country's public event ban german chancellor chancellor angela merkel announced plans for a gradual and cautious loosening of stringent coronavirus measures the new york times reported wednesday allowing some small businesses to reopen in the coming weeks but the country's ban on large public events has been extended and that will mean a radical change for germany's massive gaming convention gamescom Gamescom draws more than 350,000 attendees annually to Cologne, Germany. This year's event was scheduled scheduled to take place August 25th through 29th, but the country's ban on public gatherings now extends to August 31st, ruling out a massive convention. Organizers said on Twitter that the extension will affect this year's show, but did not provide specifics, other than to say Gamescom 2020 will definitely take place digitally. Mm-hmm. Even though not all details are known at present, the nationwide ban on major events until the end of August will also affect the planning for hashtag Gamescom 2020. Furthermore, Gamescom 2020 will definitely take place digitally. We, pr- we will provide further information shortly. It's awesome to see how uh, transparent Gamescom is being with everything that we didn't see with E3 uh, 2020. Uh, I'm going to go bring this over to you, Adam, since you have the insight here. Um, are you seeing what I'm seeing, at least? Because, again, I'm just looking at it through a surface-level perspective. You have uh, more depth into this. Are you seeing the difference between what Gamescom has done and what E3 tried to do this year? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, obviously, E3 is against the ropes, by, especially with their you know data breach they had last yeah. year and a lot of the other decisions that they've been making. 
And Gamescom's, I think, stock has been rising. Mm. I mean, they've been doing really good things. You know, Jeff Keighley does his whole thing there, and he pulled out a E3 before everything happened. So they're making good decisions, and it's a huge thing. Um, and, yeah, E3 is just, you know, the ESA just has no idea what's going on. I mean, yeah. they're trying to, like, write that sinking ship, and it's decision after decision is like, what are you guys really trying to do here? Mm-hmm. It just seems like they're trying to grab as much money as they can and do all they can. So once again, the bad stuff came out about E3, so people saw it kind of like Rockstar, where Gamescom is still a little more untarnished, as it yeah. were. So I think they've definitely been, that definitely factors into it for sure. And how do you think that the current situation is going to be affecting, not just like conventions, because that's out of the, you know, the, the way that we're seeing, but you so even sad. talked about, you know, previewing games. How how do you think, and have you seen any changes of how you're communicating with devs? Like, are they actually giving you a code to a build? Like, what do you think is the future if this thing is going past 2020? Yeah, so for now, yeah, so some devs will send out builds of games. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like we have Grand Theft Auto 7 in the office now. And we're it and <laughs> Where is it? Oh, whoops. Was I not supposed to say that? <laughs> You're on the moon. It takes moon place in Cleveland, time. Ohio. Cleveland. It takes oh, place sweet. in Cleveland, Ohio, so that's good. <laughs> um, no, so yeah, so, so some devs do send builds of the games for previews and consideration. Other companies will do like, you know, a, a, a secure meeting, like even Zoom or Discord mm. or something, where they'll show a presentation of a game because obviously they can't fly people out there to preview events right now or anything. So that is definitely shifting. But as you can see with, you know, obviously the big companies, they can host their own events. They can do a lot of things in, you know, tandem with this. And, you know, IGN, we're doing our summer of gaming thing right. this year in, in, in replacement of like an E3 style thing. So there's ways where it can happen. So like I said, we are... For the fort, as as unfortunate at this as this thing is, it hit us in a good time where a lot of things can be done online. You know, if this happened in the late '90s, early 2000s, it'd be a completely different story. Mm. So it's we're definitely a lot more. It's, it's, there's still obviously challenges and stuff, but we're a lot more ready for to, to transition with this kind of stuff. So it's uh yeah, it's interesting. I, and do you think we're transitioning into a world where kids want to go to E3? I, mean, I remember when I was a kid, I wanted to go to E3 so bad. Do we think oh we're God. transitioning? That was the mountaintop. I know, that was the mountaintop. You say kid. That was like before E3 was canceled. That was still a thing I was thinking. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, for sure. Do we now, do you think it's going to, to, to be, I don't want to go to E3 anymore. I want to go to Gamescom. Do you think that's going to be the thing that's taking E3's place? So... They're so different because Gamescom is such a public facing show. It has yeah, you know, like you like over three hundred and fifty thousand attendees where E three is around sixty five thousand. Mm-hmm. So obviously it was meant for like press, but like all you hear about Gamescom and you always see the images of like a sea of people. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. I mean, we were at PAX East and mm-hmm. I mean, saw like there was it was decently crowded and like there were obviously still super long waits for things, but that's always the biggest problem going is like public to these events is you're only going to play like one or two games. <laughs> you're going to have to wait in lines mm-hmm. and do all this stuff, which is crazy, which is crazy. But I still think there is going to be something, something like an E3 or some kind of thing, because I think it's, it is important, especially for, you know, aspiring journalists mm-hmm. and aspiring people like that. Because for me personally, like E3 was always Mount Everest for me. And, you know, they're, they've been making a lot of bad decisions, obviously, but even this year, like I was still so excited to go there. I mean, it's just, there's something, especially when you live, like, you know, I live in Columbus, Ohio, and there's not really any... De- there's a few, like, smaller game development studios, and some of my friends like games, but not too much. Mm-hmm. But when you're at a place like that, where you're surrounded by people who love everything you love, and you can just share in that passion, it's incredible. And I think, instead of a Gamescom, like, PAX is more of, I mm-hmm. think, what, you know, this the next big thing, if they can really kind of evolve that. Because, you know, PAX East, they still have some big games, but... They're, it's still not quite to the level of like an E3 with like AAA everywhere you can see. Yeah. So I'm, I'm high, but I think if E3 goes away, there's still, I still think there's room for those kind of things. And I think it's important, especially for people who are love games as much as we do to have yeah. a place to strive for and to go to and meet all that yeah, stuff. One of my favorite things that I've ever been to was PSX. Uh, oh yeah. That was, yeah. I'm sad. I never got to go to that. Yeah, it's amazing. It, it, it's incredible. And the only thing that I, uh, I missed out on, uh, was they didn't do their E3 style presentation. Oh yeah. Um, right. 
So like, I, that's still something that I, I hope I get to sit in one day because that is just oh like my God. sit amongst the crowd when new games are just getting announced left and right. Like hell yeah, that's like why I love yeah. the E3 uh, when PlayStation did E3 in the theaters. That thing was so oh, cool to sit in the theater the amongst people. Like yeah, being around like minded people. That's why I love PAX East. Mm-hmm. Just so yeah, see I mean, games, just... talk games. Like it's amazing. And I have to give a shout out to Xbox who. I don't know if you guys are familiar How with like, the you? Fan How Fest. How dare you? How dare you? I'm so sorry. No, I don't care. Yeah, no PlayStation. Screw yeah. Xbox. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, uh, with Fan yeah. Fest. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but they basically take, you know, I think it's like 500, 600 people. It's all random and stuff. So my first E3 was 2018. Mm. And this was before I was working for IGN. I was with a site called Marooners Rock. And I got accepted to Fan Fest. And they literally sat us. I was in the third row in the Microsoft That's Theater awesome. watching the E3 press conference That's awesome. when Ori 2 was announced and Gareth Coker was on stage playing the song and I like literally almost died. <laughs> it was just like, I mean, there's you can, it's there's no words to describe that. And I I would just be so sad to see those kind of things go away. Yeah. And that's another thing. While I was, I know obviously they can't do it now, but why I was so surprised PlayStation didn't have a huge PSX that was going to be a blowout for PS5 because that would have been yeah. like the coolest thing yeah, ever. That's Absolutely. something we were, we were championing for a long time. It's like God. when they re- release it, this, that, the other thing, it never yeah. happened. And that, that bums me out. And like, yeah, like FanFest is awesome. Like, like, amazing. I, like, amazing. Yeah, Xbox, like, owning their community and going, hey, listen, game, we're, we're bringing people out here. I mean, that's the reason why, you know, we've been hitting them all night. Well, let's give them something here. <laughs> a good friend, yeah. Sean Capri over at the Xbox shop, got to go uh, and, and experience E3 was because, yeah, they're like, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll tag you along. And so it's, it's awesome to see that. And it sucks that that's not happening this year. Oh, Kyle, my, my question to you Especially is, me. what is this digital uh, conference going to look like? Oh, man. So I'm, I'm thinking it's probably going to be along the lines of what Jeff does with YouTube with E3. Mm. I can just imagine having just a room and just have developers in and out talking about their games. Because um, I'm not sure if like they'll have like a press conference for Sony or Xbox or, or Nintendo there so or third party. I can just see it being like Jeff sitting there and talking to developers, which is just as rad. So yeah. that's what I'm thinking it will be. Yes, just Zoom. And sure. like, and <laughs> Jeff does what everybody's doing recently, which is like yeah. sets up a background, like a clone of Jeff. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the way to go. I think having just everybody just zoomed in and going because everybody understands, you know, like production value. You look at any late night show, they're doing it in attics and shit. So like everybody gets it. Um, yeah. So for me, yeah, that's what I kind of think. It's going to be game, game, game. I do hope we do see, and we probably will, the big heavy hitters. We'll probably see Xbox. We'll probably see PlayStation uh, there in some way, shape, or form. But, yeah, awesome. With that, I would like to see, like, a state of play during that time. What, Like a mini state of play? Sure. Oh. Big. Big. I mean, big, yeah, big. big is what I want, but I'll just take any big. state of play at this point. <laughs> okay. I'll <laughs> dig. I, I dig it. I dig it. With that, gang, listen, we've had a lot of news to talk about. Usually we have the drop, but we're not doing that. We're not holding on. Well, we will hold on to something. <laughs> Usually I each and every week, I steal Andrew House's mail. It's a long song and dance. I still stole his mail this week, Adam, but <laughs> I enjoyed it. I did. But we're not going to talk <laughs> about that. No, no, no. Instead, gang, are you holding on to something? Yes. Good. Prepare the drop. You've been waiting for it. And now we're going to give our impressions of Final Fantasy VII Remake. So. Alright, gang. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, instead of Andrew House's snail mail, instead of the drop, I didn't know how long this show was going to be. Adam, do you mind staying a little bit longer? Talk about Final Fantasy VII? Talk about Final Fantasy VII? Are you kidding me? I'll stay all night. <laughs> Wife and kid, who needs them? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's have a little bit longer of a show so we could get at least brief impressions of Final Fantasy VII. And await no longer. Kyle, gush about this game. Oh my god, it's perfect in every way imaginable. It is exactly <laughs> what I was expecting and hoping for. Um, sure, I know what you're c- going to say, Joe. And yes, some of the textures aren't great. 
or like not at all. Uh, Doorgate 2020. I can't wait to see yes. what the door looks like in PS5. Um, it is, but other than that, the combat is fantastic. The character models are great of the main cast and the baddies. Um, I love everyone's voice acting and their performances. Shout out to Brianna White, who Aerith is her first voice acting role ever. She's wow. killing it. Go go check out her YouTube channel, the uh, the Strange Rebel. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I love again. I, I think I said this on Platform Agnostic, but uh, I am a big fan of Final Fantasy menus. And mm-hmm. the fact that this menu has a materia system and it still levels up is so good and so nostalgic. And it just and seeing the enemies being reborn into this new visual world is mm-hmm. great. The new stuff they added is awesome. But like I can go, I'm like Adam. I could talk about this yeah. forever. So I'll take a break because we are going to be doing a Road to Greatness episode about yep. it and go in depth on everything. But yeah, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. You love it every single minute of it. Oh my god, I'm thinking about playing it right now because I'm doing a bunch <laughs> of side quests and I'm like, I gotta find these children. Yeah. Like, where are they? <laughs> that is that is one thing. Um, just quests. Like you can't say that and have that mustache. Out. <laughs> I. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Be careful, Kyle. Um, that's one thing that with the, when it comes to like the side quests, there's a couple like, hey, go find yeah. uh, these chocobos or find these uh, missing children from the the foster house, yeah. um, and where they just give you like where the mission giver is, mm-hmm. and then it's just like go on and find them on your own with no real wave points. Mm-hmm. So it does feel like I'm kind of wandering around trying to hope to run into them. Yeah. But that's just such a minor minor nitpick. Okay, so uh, other than Aerith killing it so far, yeah, what is oh everyone's killing it, everybody's yeah. killing it. I was gonna say oh, who yeah. who is your favorite remaked character, remade character? Ooh. I mean, honestly, I'm gonna say Aerith because they give her so much more depth in this, mm, okay, than the original game, um, especially with her interactions with Cloud and mm. how she you can see her effect on Cloud like almost instantly, like it's. It's pretty amazing what they did with that character. All right. Awesome. Adam, you've been playing Final Fantasy oh VII, too. I have. <laughs> You're a pretty big fan. So, Let's go. Let's do it. So for a little context, Final Fantasy VII is my favorite game of all time. Okay. I've beaten it six times, so this is technically my seventh playthrough. I do have the Platinum in the original. Plan on getting the Platinum for this. So it's... I love this game. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I've played remakes before, but I've never played a game that I know so well, and it's... Literally the craziest thing ever. Mm-hmm. Like, the, everything is so much bigger and, like, so crazy because... But they they keep what made Final Fantasy VII special. And even as small as, like, the level design of where things are, like, I remember the spaces you're in, even though they're fully realized in 3D. Yeah. And what's crazy, too, to me is, like, you know, the, the original game is, like, a top-down kind of view. Mm-hmm. But now you can, like, look up and see, you know, Midgar and the plates and the tower and all this kind of stuff. And it's just... It's it's literally insane. And <laughs> the first the, time the, I saw one... Wall Market, I just had to put the controller down and be like, "Oh my god, they did it!" Like it is, oh, it's, it's perfect. Yeah, it's just insane. And you know, especially shout out to the music. I'll never forget that first time when you know the iconic scene of when Cloud meets Aerith. I, I know her as Ares, so yeah. it's still weird mm-hmm. for me to say Aerith. But <laughs> you know, when when Cloud first meets Aerith and buys a flower, and there's the question like, if Cloud wants to buy the flower or not. And then Aerith's theme just starts playing like on a single piano, and I just I lost it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like it was like a it was it was a magical moment. Mm-hmm. It's the combat's great. I think what's also awesome about that game is like it's so weird. Every time I'm like, man, I, I wish they had this, or I wonder where this is. It like always comes. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> they thought it, like you said, like the materia, the upgrading certain weapons, getting the weapons, mm-hmm. getting the way the items work, the way certain things happen. Even I mean, I was something so silly. Like I was running around. Because it's kind of a linear feeling game. It like it's not super open yeah. world. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I grew up grinding my ass off and like getting leveling up characters. And I spent like an hour just running back and forth grinding and playing this game. And I'm like, this feels like what I remember. And I just love everything. I mean, I, I can't say enough good things about it. It's just perfect. The only bad thing is that it's only mid Like I <laughs> yeah. just want to keep going forever and ever and ever. It's, I mean, I don't know why we're going to get three games four games when are we gonna play it's just that's the one thing that kind of bums you like man i just it's just crazy but it's they've done what they've done is and i can't believe who is your favorite remade character yeah i'd probably have to agree with kyle and say Aerith. i mean you know i i I like seeing cloud especially because he's just so iconic Mm -hmm. and he's a character but 
like first of all once again it, it all pretty much ties back to music and Aerith's theme is like one of my favorite songs ever and i just it's been my ps4 theme profile and it, i just <laughs> it hits me so well so whenever she shows up and like what that's what it's also so cool is like the music kind of changes depending on it like it's not always the same thing like there's variations of the battle themes and the boss themes and it's there's so many surprises like you know it's it's is i think this is a great jumping off point and a even if you haven't played Final Fantasy VII, I've heard a lot of people who like love it even without mm-hmm. that nostalgia. But man, if you know it as as well or even on a level that I do, it's I don't have that nostalgia. It's, it's something yeah. special. Also, real real quick, Joe, before you hop in, uh, another performance that I just remembered is, and it gives so much more life to a character we didn't get much of in the OG is Jesse and Biggs mm-hmm. oh, yeah. and Wedge. Like Definitely. they are all so much more fleshed out, and Jesse is just like. There's a, so there's a moment in the game, I'm not going to spoil it, but you find out more about her backstory. It's like, oh my god, that's so cool. She's so is, I, I I missed interacting with some things in that section, and I had to restart because I went to go interact with after you, you grabbed the key thing you were supposed to get. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my god, I missed so many things. Let me restart. And then I found <laughs> out like some super cool backstory to Jesse, yeah. which was, yeah, which was awesome. Really and cool. again, I'll say for the really third cool. time, she is so thirsty everyone in this game is so Seriously. horny it's all it is it's very anime it's, yeah, it's, yeah and it's like a lot of grunts it's all like, Ugh, uh. <laughs> i hate when they do uh. i'm like what did you just do <laughs> that's gotta be the most awkward day in the booth yeah yeah it's like grunt day okay what do you want like like i don't know you're confused grunt <laughs> <laughs> like, okay so um you're kind of upset but like disappointed <laughs> I'm sorry, we made too much goo in the booth. We need to anyway. So, uh, as someone who has no nostalgia for this game, zip, none, nada, zilch. I've never played Final Fantasy VII. I've seen it like screens. I know what happens. I'm leaving. I know what happens. I'm sorry. So, like, it's been decades, and I'm not upset that I know things. All right, Kyle says that I'm pretty on the money as well, by the way. Yeah, I'm not going to confirm or deny anything, really. Well, I was right. Anyway, nonetheless, <laughs> do I like this game? Because the Discord was wondering. Ray was very, very worried. Um, I have put uh, somewhere in between 18 to 20 hours into the game so far. Uh, and I don't know if it's my game of the year yet. Right, like, so like wh- where I'm putting it, where I'm ranking. It. I do need to see the end of it. Um, I think I went in with the right expectation of Joe. If this is as strict of a remake as possible, you need to let your guard down because it's gonna be '90s. It's gonna be you're gonna have some references to things that are clear '90s. You're gonna see some some tropes, some stereotypes from the '90s, and you're kind of why do, you're going to need to let it go if you're going to enjoy this game. And I'm very happy that I I, I kind of knocked those walls down. And honest to God, I'm in love with this game. Like, it is incredible through and through. Yeah, there are some, some really bad facial animations, some really bad textures. Like, it just seems like they, they took their hand and they just went, this was what a door should look like and just kind of mop it up with that. Um, some of the faces look absolutely lifeless, but when it comes to the, the, the core gameplay, it feels so great. It feels like, you know, you know, everybody says, you know, it's a, it's a, a a turn-based strategy game, right? It takes the elements from that where you're in, you're in a screen or sorry, let me backtrack here where you're fighting like a regular action game, kind of like a Final Fantasy 15 meets like Kingdom Hearts Kingdom 3 Hearts. Mm-hmm. Uh, refined combat. And then you're able to pause the screen, but it's kind of in a very, very, very slow-mo screen. So the, everybody's still moving, but like literally at one point speed. And then you still have that turn-based style where, you know, you, you're, you're filling in your meter with your basic attacks. And then it, you take turns with the little block bars that you build up and each character I believe has two and you're able to use that for more powerful attacks for your magic attacks. And you're kind of filling in the gaps with, with that. The combat is superb and the boss fights in particular are hard as hell. They're challenging. 
almost every single one I've died like at least once or twice on. But you learn and you get back at it. And when you learn that winning combination, when you, you know, there's a move called uh, assess, which is like I can go to any boss fight and look up the boss and just like Google their weaknesses. But I actually want to de- like do the deep dive and have the ability where I, I access not just their weaknesses, but the biography of like, this is what this character was, what they're all about, why we're fighting them, what their abilities are. Like, it gives you kind of like the Pokemon stat. And I dig it so much. The characters, again, you got your anime charm, but like, not not just is everybody attractive and very horny. I'm talking so horny. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to sell that. But like... That's why I keep playing this game. It's not just because everybody's horny, but for the simple fact that every character is appealing. Like, everybody has a story that I actually give a shit about. Uh, you know, Jesse's backstory is fantastic, and I heard she had, like, three lines in the original, right? Aerith, I thought she was just a really weird, creepy girl. <laughs> I'm like, she, she's the homeschool kid. You know, you look at it, and you're like, oh, boy. But then she blossoms, and that's, and that's what Aerith is, like... I'm 18 hours in. I'm like, I care for Aerith. I'm scared for Aerith. Uh, Tifa, again, like she has a backstory that you give a shit about. And even I know there's still controversy over Barrett because Barrett is this, you know, 14 foot black guy with a huge ass chain gun. Um, I was worried about that stereotype uh, all too well for me. And I know I'm Hispanic, so I can't talk for everyone here, but like I didn't have a problem with it. I thought, you know, you understood immediately that he's more than a caricature of of Mr. T and that, yeah, he is this big, bulky person, but he has fears. He has people he cares about. And yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's why I keep playing the game is everybody's story. I want to see how it turns out. And so, so far, so freaking good. It is fantastic. But again, there's some flaws I can't look past. Like textures are super muddy. Like I, I can't I can't look past everything with the rose colored glasses on. So like or tinted, whatever. I always say colored, whatever. You get the point, audience. After after eighteen times of me flubbing it, you understand. So like so far, so freaking good. Again, if you get over the wonkiness, like wall what is it? Wall market? Wall market, yeah. Oh, you really want to say Walmart. No, can't. no. <laughs> Every time they're like Walmart, and I'm like, not so much Walmart. <laughs> okay, it wasn't a dig at Walmart. Okay, well, that's what I was kind of thinking. But yeah, like I, I totally dig this game. It is, it is something that I want to go back to, but I've tried to pull myself away from because I don't want to kill it. You know, like where I know I, I have at least ten more hours to go. I do want to enjoy the experience more. So that's where I'm at with Final Fantasy VII. Thank you for... This has been my TED Talk. But any <laughs> anything closing out, any closing statements about Final Fantasy VII before we go? I mean, if you, you haven't already got it or it's in, on its way to you, uh, if you bought it physically or if you have the money digitally, please do yourself a favor mm. and experience it. Even if it, you've no experience with FF7, it's amazing. Kyle, I'll get to you. I want your last word on this. But Adam, your final take. Fantastic. Yeah, once again, I think I think it's must buy. it's something that everybody yeah, it's a must buy. Everyone should try it. I think, like I said, it's good for the people who love Final Fantasy VII and even who don't. Um, and I also just think be wary of spoilers because yeah. like everyone's like, Oh, it's a twenty three year old game, you can't spoil it. But like within the first fifteen minutes you're like, Wait, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like things are different and characters are introduced earlier than they should and things are a little there's they've done a lot more to it and like i said even it's it's that but it's also the filling in of all the blanks that the original game couldn't do and learning the motivation behind different characters and stuff and that's what makes it really truly special because like i said i've played this game six times and i know this game very well and it's amazing learning so much more about the world that i thought i knew so well it's there's a lot in there if you're someone who's interested in that kind of stuff mm-hmm. so just 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 enjoy it take your time love it but be careful because yeah. it'll yeah. take over your there's, life. There's some things in there that you're like, wait, yeah, what? There, <laughs> there's for sure a character that pops up in a cutscene that I was not expecting to see. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, 
that's way too <laughs> early, I feel like, for him, but okay. Yep, yep. I, I definitely think it's the kid from Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that dork. Sora Definitely. shows up. That's that dork. <laughs> hey guys, hey guys, let's be friends. Yeah, Goofy's in the back. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, I want to be an eco terrorist. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, no. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm in it for the bloodshed. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, I want to go back one more time over to Kyle. Yeah, you gave me this most bullshit argument last year. Of why Resident uh, Evil I knew Two this was coming. couldn't couldn't be up for Game of the Year because it was a remake. Yeah. Do you still have the same bullshit argument for Final Fantasy VII? Has your bullshit <laughs> argument changed? Is... It's total bullshit. Yeah, it is. Uh... <laughs> I the like Adam said like after 15 minutes like oh my god I'm gonna have to eat so, eat some crow. Yeah. Uh, when, yeah. when I have to talk about this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess my my take on that last year was because I didn't had I did not have the history with RE2. Okay. And I I don't know how much new stuff was introduced, but the all the new stuff they've put in this one and yeah, it is uh it is for sure it's up there. Mm-hmm. And I'll take whatever punishment you want to give, give to me cuz <laughs> listen, you already got the I mustache. Understand. I don't know where we can go from here. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll listen, I'll let it know. I hate the mustache. <laughs> That's fine. I love Do it. Do you? Keep it for You know what? Let's ask the ladies. Ladies of the Trevor yeah. Room. Rate Kyle's mustache from <laughs> oh, one God. to uh, also, six. Eight. Yeah. Really quick before we get into a couple of these questions. Mm-hmm. Um, I love sitting here lis- listening to you talk about how impressed you are with a low-level magic spell that is common in Final Fantasy with Assess. <laughs> oh, is it super basic? In, in most other games, it's just like a scan. It's a uh, thing you can do. Yeah, yeah, I love it because it is imp- it is implemented well. Yeah, yes, because I'm just like, cool. oh, they're like you're telling me it how a character is and what they. I'm like, I love, yeah. I love that. I don't know. Yeah, All it's right. awesome when they when Final Fantasy does. Yeah, that. Final Fantasy fans must have been like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? It's in every <laughs> single one. <laughs> so you guys know, I only what Final Fantasy, I think 15, and the online one for like 10 minutes. That's where, like, all my Final Fantasy knowledge is. Uh, it's non-existent. With that, gang, listen, Adam's got to go home to his lovely wife and lovely child. Where am I now? I don't know. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I'm in some random guy. I'm in my neighbor's house. I leave. <laughs> You're at Andrew House's house, you know? We're going to yeah, fly him back. But um, with that, Adam, where can people find you? So before that, I do want to give a shout out to Donnie Reese oh, because right. he wanted me to give my impressions on the Browns jerseys, mm-hmm. which were revealed today. Super Bowl Browns, thank you very much. And I love yeah. them. I think they're a nice callback to uh, old school Browns while making them look a little mo- more modern. And I'm all about it. So mm-hmm. <laughs> go Browns. We're undefeated still, so we'll take it. <laughs> but, but yeah, um, you could find me. My, my main stay is Twitter, at Adam Bankhurst. You can catch all my work at IGN.com. Um, I've also... Started streaming a little bit at twitch.tv slash Adam Bankers. Not as much as I'd like because life is just way too busy, but I try to get there. But um, yeah, so you can really find me there. And then also, like I said, we do a weekly podcast called The Gamer's Advocate, which Joe will be on this weekend. I and I, I, we really I'm would excited. love you to come on. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun show. Just a bunch of friends hanging out and stuff like that. So those are the main places. And yeah, it's a, it's been a pleasure to be on again with you guys. And it's a, I really appreciate the invite. I don't get it. How are these uniforms different? <laughs> <laughs> they're really not. Yeah, <laughs> they're just, all the, the the last ones were a little more. They tried to go a little crazier, and these are a lot more kind of a callback to what was in the nineties okay. and early two thousands and whatever. But just yeah, it's nothing too crazy, yeah. radically all different. Right. That's cool. I, that's that's where my sports knowledge goes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it would have been crazy if there weren't like it was just a total different color. Yeah, that was like what like they're going it? green. <laughs> yeah. like, they're it's green now. <laughs> purple and green. What is this shit? <laughs> Kyle, where can people find you, good sir? Uh, Who that ninja seventy three on Twitter and on PSN. Um, I show all about the best friend community, uh, the kind of funny community. Uh, Best Friends Talk Funny is at BFS Talk Funny on Twitter. Uh, if you're in New York after all this craziness, hit up kindofnyc.com for future community meetups, as well as our other two shows we do there, Platform Agnostic, which is our What We've Been Playing uh, show, and Dollar Slice Pod, which is our uh, conversation show. All right. There you go. And you can find this show and me at Mr. Bad Bit on Twitter or PS Trophy Room on Twitter as well. Uh, you can find the show on YouTube at Bad Bit Games, where we also talk about all things game news, reviews, 
and unboxings. You can find their show on iTunes, on Google Play, on Spotify, wherever you get your RSS feed. That's not SoundCloud. Damn you, SoundCloud. Damn you to heck. And with all that said, with all that out of the way, everybody, keep hunting and keep playing PlayStation.